So in this video I just want to show you the erection procedure for a broken hip and valley roof. And as you can see here I've got the layout of my top plates and of course I've got this little L shape coming off the end here. That's going to create a broken hip and valley in our, uh, in our roof line. Now this little extension could be anywhere, it could come out of here, could come out of this end, it doesn't really matter, the procedure will all be the same. Now uh, before we get started, once again, it's important to remember that we have to put our ceiling frame in at some stage and whether you put it in before you erect the roof or after, it's still worth considering where it's going to go and to mark it out at the same time as you mark out the rafters for the roof. So you need to think about that. The other thing you may need to want to consider is at some stage we're going to have to put some strutting beams in to strut our purlin on our main roof so once again um, whether you put that in now or later personally I find it easier to put it in after the roof's done just so that you know where they're going to have to land but something worth considering so I'll get rid of the roof frame for the uh, most of the video just to save on some um, confusion and we'll get started so as always we'll start with the main roof and we'll start with our centering rafters so we've come back our half span so whatever a half this distance is we come back the same distance to the center of our rafter and that'll give us our centering rafters and same as we've done for every other roof and the gable put the ridge in there and then as for a hip roof we'll start putting our hip in so we put in our crown end rafters Notice this one only just um, makes it because uh, it actually sits pretty much half on. It's sitting half on there because this is um, half the width of the building. So, so it just fits. We can just get in, it, it in. So crown ends in both end. And put our three hips in, so one here, one on this back corner here, which you can't quite see, just there, and one down there, as you can see them there. And again, really up to you, you can put the jack rafters in now, or you could leave them till uh, a little bit later. So that's the start of our main roof. Now we need to get round and work on our actual broken hip end. So once again, with our minor span, what we do. Take our half span, come back that distance to the center of the rafter. And what I've also done, I've taken one of these common rafters for our minor span of the roof and I've just put it up here. And that will give me the height of the ridge at this end. So then we can put a ridge in all the way through to there. Now I'll move this rafter now, but it just gives us that height, gives us that set out. So that's the, uh, one of the main steps. So then, once again, we just continue taking that rafter out of there, put a crown end rafter in here, put our hips in, put our creepers in, our common rafters. So we actually end up with two common rafters on this side of the roof and quite a few down here to fill in this area here. Okay, so there's nothing too hard about that. Now we have to do the actual broken hip. So if you swing around into the broken hip and the valley, this is our valley here. All the bevels are the same as for our hips. However, the position where it ends up here, uh, the way you work that out is the distance. You take the distance from the outside of the plate here to the outside of the plate here. And all you have to do is measure that from the centre line of this set of rafters down to the, give you the centre point of the broken hip and of course so the broken valley and the hip here. Okay, so I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so that distance we had is, it comes to here and you see we line up the centre line of the v broken valley and the centre line of the broken hip and that uh, gives us our intersection point. All worked off the centre lines. So just remember, 
Uh, go back a little bit. That's the distance from the outside of this plate to the outside of that plate, measured from the centre line of these rafters to give you the centre line for that intersection. Okay, and that gives you that. Okay, so once we've actually got those into place, we then have to fill in with our valley rafters, valley creepers. You can see here, there's got the plum cut on the top, and our our valley, sorry, our hip um, face and edge bevel on the bottom end. We also have this couple here, which have creepers cut, creeper cuts on the top, and valley cuts on the bottom. And then we have to fill in this area over here as well. So we fill in that little corner. Make sure we've got rafters at our standard spacing, whatever it is. 600 or 450, all the way through there. That's pretty much got our broken hip and our valley formed. Now all we have to do is do our purlins. Oh. So our purlin. But you only need to do this main roof. This uh, lower section is not big enough in this case. And we then need to put our ceiling frame back up and our strutting beam, which carries our fan struts. And in this case, we've got a couple of fan struts going down onto the internal walls here and here to carry the purlin at each end. And that's it. That's a broken hip and valley roof um, constructed.